Hi everyone, today we're going to be solving Cambridge International ASN and A level Biology 9700 paper 11 May June 2023. The electron micrograph shows onion root cells prepared using a freeze fracture technique. The cells were quickly frozen and then physically broken apart. Freeze fracture breaks apart cells along weak areas such as membranes and the surface of surfaces of organelles. We can see in the diagram we are asked to label structure X. Now the question says which statement best explains the appearance of the electron micrograph. So looking into the electron micrograph we will see that this is the cell material. So this is like cytoplasm. So that makes this particular cell in this particular part that makes this particular part a organelle. So this could be nucleus. The reason why we can say that this is nucleus because we see that there are double membrane. There is this membrane 1 and on top of it we can see another membrane membrane 2 and on top of the structure we can see structure S X which appears in both of the membrane so must be nuclear pore. Let's look at the options. The cells were broken apart at the endoplasmic reticulum. Structure X is a ribosome. Endoplasmic reticulums are, you know, either they are tubular or they are flat sacs. And in this structure, it's a round, large round. So uh, we can definitely say that these structures are not ribosomes. Okay. And neither it is tubular or flat. So this uh, option A is not correct. The cells were broken apart at the nuclear envelope. Structure X is nuclear pore. So according to our assumption, this matches the description. Structure X is nuclear pore. And as I have already told you, the reason is this particular region where we can see already a double membrane. And inside we see the same structure and outside also we see the same structure. So we see one membrane here and the same membrane exists inside. Nuclear envelope is a double membrane. Let's see option number C. The cells were broken apart at the nuclear envelope. Structure X is a ribosome. We know that nuclear envelope do not have ribosome. The cells were broken apart at the tonoplast. Structure X is a plasmodesma. So uh, the structure X are too small to be a plasmodesma and we do not see any barrier between two cells. We only see a particular large round object which is ending on a single cell on that same cell material that means must be cytoplasm so b is the correct answer which cell structures can form vesicles now we know that vesicles can be formed by cell surface membrane definitely endoplasmic reticulum of course so now we are uh, you know shortening in our options and golgi body as well so the oh, tick marks is equals to that they can form vesicles and a indicates that all of this cell structure can form vesicles so a is the correct answer four students were asked to match the function of the appearance of some cell structure in an animal cell. The functions were listed by the number. Synthesis of polypeptides. Now this is done by ribosomes. Synthesis of lipids. Lipids are produced by endoplasmic reticulum. In this case, smooth endoplasmic reticulum produces lipids. Packaging of hydrolytic enzymes that will remain in the cell. Now this is done by Golgi body. The appearances were listed by the letter V, membrane which surrounds an enclosed inner cavity. So membrane that surrounds an enclosed inner cavity should be. Now this could be uh, definitely uh, because we have the three options from here. All right. However, this can be according to my assumption could be vesicle or it could be smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Non-membrane bound spherical structure. This is definitely ribosomes they appear spherical and they are not membrane bound. A double membrane interspersed with pores, this is definitely nucleus because nucleus have double membrane and also have pores, nuclear pores. Non-membrane bound cylindrical structures, non-membrane bound cylindrical structures, definitely centrioles. Membrane bound sacs arranged as a flattened stack, this is Golgi body. The question says which student correctly matched the numbered function with the appearance of the cell structure. So for number one, number one we have detected a ribosome and W matches ribosome. So A and B should be correct answer. For number two, the synthesis of lipid we have matched smooth endoplasmic reticulum and only V matches smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So we can take that one.
For number three, packaging of hydrolytic enzyme, it should be Golgi body, which is Z. So number three, so A should be the correct answer. Which cells contain a tonoplast? So plant cell contains tonoplast. Now, tonoplast, even the contained within plant cell, but tonoplast it not, is not contained within phloem sieve tube element. Phloem sieve tube element do not have tonoplast. So, since all three options says, you know, uh, phloem sieve tube element has tonoplast because tick mark is equals to contain tonoplast. So, the answer is definitely D. Now, let's match the other options. Root hair, yes, definitely has a tonoplast. Companion cell, definitely has a tonoplast. Endodermis, endodermal cell also has tonoplast. Now, tonoplast is responsible for producing plants permanent vacuole. And we know that phloem sieve tube element do not have permanent vacuole. So D is the correct answer. Which organelle found in animal or plant cells are surrounded by double membranes? Now double membranes are contained in first one we can say is in the nucleus. All right. Now, obviously, plural of nucleus is nuclei. So we can see there are three options here for nuclei, either B, C or D. Now, double membranes are not found in vacuoles. So C and D are crossed out and also A is crossed out. However, double membranes are also found in chloroplast and mitochondria. They both contain double membrane in their outer region. So B is the correct answer. Some students think that mitochondria evolved from bacteria that entered the cytoplasm of a different cell and were able to survive there. Which structural features of mitochondria support this hypothesis? So this feature that we, we are saying that it entered the cytoplasm of a different cell and survived there is known as endosymbiosis or endosymbiont theory. The one of the main reason we can say mitochondria, uh, one of the main structural features that can tell that mitochondria is a structure is a bacteria. That's because it contains 70s ribosome. Bacteria have 70s ribosome. So tick mark. So options could be A, C, and D, and B is already taken out here. All right. Circular DNA. Yes, definitely. Uh, we can already see uh, that because mitochondria is an early bacteria, it has a circular DNA. So options A and option D will still still correct. Now next folded internal membrane. Mitochondria have folded internal membrane. So but the problem is a folded internal membrane does not tell whether it is uh, a foreign all right cell or there is a bacteria that has entered another cell. So number D has to be a uh, folded internal membrane has to be crossed out. All right, it does not support. So D is the correct answer. What is present in all viruses, all prokaryotes, and all eukaryotes? So viruses, prokaryotes, and eukaryotes consist of at least a nucleic acid. Now the nucleic acid definitely, definitely should consist of, all right, even if it is DNA, all right, it should contain cytosine. Even in RNA, it should contain the cytosine. So cytosine is the correct answer. Now the reason why the other options are not correct is ribose is only found in RNA. Now problem which starts with virus. Virus may contain DNA or RNA. So since ribosome ribose is only found in RNA, so that's why it can't be present. It may not be present in all viruses. Deoxyribose is the same. It's only present in DNA. So this can also be wrong. Thymine is only present in RNA sorry, is only present in DNA and not present in RNA and thereby thymine is also cancelled out. However, cytosine is contained by both RNA and DNA. So C is the correct answer. The table shows some steps that can be made in carrying out the Benedict's test. Which combinations of steps is required to carry out a semi-quantitative test on the reducing sugar solution? Standardized volume of Benedict's solution and the volume of test solution. So definitely if we want to do a semi-quantitative test, it must be a standardized volume of both of the solution that will be needed. So option uh, B and option D are already crossed out. Boil with hydrochloric acid then neutralize with alkali. Now to test on a reducing sugar this step is not necessary because boil with hydrochloric acid is only for non-reducing sugar. So we can 
say that this will be both crosses so having the cross this step is not step not made is correct standardize boiling time with benedict's solution and compare final color with numbered colored standards yes because we want to do a semi quantitative test so we must have a standardized boiling time and also we need to match it with a standard color so c will be the correct answer this step is made the diagram shows three examples of different bonds in the first bond one we can see a hydrogen bond in the bond 2, we can see an amide bond. In the bond 3, we can see a sulfur bridge or a sulfur disulfide, disulfide bond. Which bonds hold the secondary structure of proteins together? Now, obviously, number 3 will be wrong because this is tertiary structure. Number 2 is wrong because this is primary structure. So, only bond 1 is correct. So, C will be the answer because C has only bond 1. Insulin is a globular protein involved in cell signaling. It is transported in the blood plasma from the cells that synthesize it to the target cells. A molecule of insulin contains 6 sulfur containing amino acids and has 2 polypeptide chain. Which statement about the insulin are correct? The 2 polypeptide chain is indicative of quaternary structure. The 6 sulfur containing amino acid is an indication of disulfide bond which by itself is a tertiary structure. Insulin is a globular protein meaning it is water soluble. It is transported in the blood plasma from the cells that synthesize it. So the cell that synthesizes insulin is beta cells in islets of Langerhans in the pancreas. An insulin molecule has a quaternary structure. This is a correct statement. Insulin polypeptides are held together by 6 disulfide bond. Now, since there are 6 sulfur containing amino acids, we are supposed to have 3 disulfide bond because each sulfur containing 2 of them can produce 1 disulfide bond. So, 6 sulfur containing amino acid will produce 3 disulfide bond. So number three is wrong. Amino acids with hydrophobic R groups would be found in the center of an insulin molecule. This is correct. Hydrophobic means water heating, which generally means oily molecules. So the oily will be the center and the outside will be uh, water soluble. So options one and three correct. So C will be the correct answer. Which statement correctly explains why blood plasma can be maintained at a stable temperature? The options are it has a low specific heat capacity. Now we know that uh, blood plasma mainly consists of water and water has a high specific heat capacity. Option B, it has a high specific heat capacity. Yes, this could be the answer and this is the answer because water has a specific heat capacity of 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius, meaning it takes a lot of energy to increase the temperature of water by 1 degree Celsius. Let's see the other option. It has a low latent heat of vaporization. Now we know that latent heat of vaporization means how much heat energy is needed to vaporize water. So low latent heat of vaporization means it requires less amount of heat. So we know that that's not correct. So this will be wrong. It has high latent heat of vaporization. We know that water has a high latent heat of vaporization. However, having a high latent heat of vaporization means it is easy to cool when sweating occurs. However, it doesn't allow us to explain why we can why we can maintain the temperature at a stable temperature. That's why point B is definitely correct. In which region on the graph shows the activation of an enzyme catalyzed reaction? A enzyme catalyzed reaction has a lower activation energy barrier. So we can see C is representing activation barrier without catalyst. B is showing lower amount of energy with catalyst. So Ea with catalyst and A is showing the energy difference between them. While the D is, D is basically at this point it's not showing much of a difference in terms. Alright, so uh, B will be the correct answer. The graph shows the effect of increasing substrate concentration on the rate of an enzyme catalyzed reaction. If we increase the substrate concentration, the rate of reaction starts increasing as we can see. However, we can reach a maximum rate of reaction with a given amount of enzyme. There are two reactions however here. One is represented by P. The other is at a is happening at a lower rate. 
lower rate which could be easily explained by the use of uh, non uh, by the use of competitive catalyst because competitive catalyst they fight for the enzymes active active site all right so higher concentration of substrate is needed to achieve the same maximum rate of reaction line p represents the result when the enzyme is used at its optimum ph and optimum temperature and without an inhibitor line q represents the result when the reaction conditions are changed so we can already assume the reaction condition is changed only with the inhibitor which is uh, the competitive inhibitor sorry guys i meant to say here inhibitor though i said catalyst by mistake so here in this one we can assume that that is a action of competitive inhibitor because the active site is having a competition which descriptions of changes to the reaction condition would result in line q if all other conditions were kept the same an inhibitor that attaches to a site other than the active site so number one is wrong because this is the description of a non-competitive inhibitor and the other than the active site means allosteric site which permanently destroys that particular enzyme and inhibitor that has a similar shape to the substrate yes this is the uh, this is the same as competitive inhibitor so we can write ci for that an inhibitor that blocks the active site of the enzyme now yes this can be also correct because if it blocks the active site of the enzyme then some active site will be taken out of action and thereby those active site will not be taking part in the reaction so yes it can work number four carry out the reaction at a higher temperature this one will not be correct number four one of the reason being number four if a reaction is carried out at a higher temperature then either the enzyme will be denatured or if it is very high temperature or if it is moderately high temperature then the rate of reaction increases so two and three are possible correct answers which statement about cell signaling is correct one type of receptor molecule will recognize all ligands in the body now receptor molecules are highly specific so all ligands will not be recognized the binding of a ligand may cause a change to the shape of the receptor the receptor may bind around that particular ligand uh, just like any other enzyme so b could be a possible correct answer let's see the other options the receptor for ligands are always found on the inside of the cells well the receptors are found on outside the same ligand is made by all of the cells in the body well we have different types of cells so different types of cell produces different type of uh, you know uh, ligands so in this case b will be the correct answer four students a b c d observed plant epidermal cells that has been placed in a concentrated sucrose solution for 30 minutes they were asked to identify the partially permeable layer and to explain the appearance of the cells in terms of water potential and movement movement of water which student is correct partially permeable layer cell surface membrane so we know that cell surface membrane is a partially permeable layer all right however cell wall is a fully permeable uh, permeable membrane a fully permeable layer so we will just cross it out now the question in question we have observed the epidermal cells that has been placed in concentrated sucrose solution for 30 minutes in a condition like this where the cell has been placed in a concentrated sucrose solution water will move out of that particular epidermal cell so h2o will move out now then they were asked to identify the partially permeable layer and to explain the appearance of the cells in terms of water potential so now we'll have to describe appearance explain appearance so explanation now let's see water potential at the start of the experiment cell contents have a lower water potential than the sucrose solution as we have already said that water will move out that's because in concentrated solution there is low water potential all right so water will move out so cell contents have a lower water potential than the sucrose solution this is wrong cell contents will have a higher water potential than the sucrose solution that's why water will move out and what movement of water during the experiment so we know that more water will move out of the cell than water will move in of course some amount of water may move in even during the experiment all right but only very little and most amount of water will move out so b is the correct answer 
The table compares the surface area to volume ratio of five agar blocks that differ in dimensions, but which all have the same volume. The agar blocks can be used to measure the efficiency of diffusion, where efficiency is measured as the time taken for a die to reach all parts of the block. So we can see length in millimeter. So the length in millimeter width height they are mentioned. However, case of every one of them the volume is the same however we can easily say that the volume is the highest at four and then we can number them accordingly the second highest at five so this is the highest number one and then uh, number five will have the second highest and then followed by three here fourth highest and then this is the last okay so surface area to volume ratio differs the higher the surface area to volume ratio we can assume that it will have the highest rate of division which prediction can be made about the way in which size and dimension of this block affect the efficiency of division the efficiency of diffusion will decrease the width as the width of the block increases now even if the width of the block increases and let's say the length remains the same then you know uh, diffusion will not be affected by the increase in width but rather will be affected by the length so this is not correct the efficiency of diffusion will increase as the height of the block increases okay so as the height of the block increases all right again uh, if we want to increase the uh, in efficiency of diffusion all right uh, we can have a higher height but then if the length or the width are lower then it will have a higher efficiency so increase in height may decrease the efficiency while the other two factors are the uh, same then uh, it will not be affected as much the efficiency of division will increase as block of fixed volume is flattened this is correct once we flatten we increase surface area so c is the process where we increase surface area to volume ratio now here the last point says which the efficiency of diffusion will decrease as block of fixed volume is elongated it will not decrease rather it will increase because we are increasing surface area so c should be the correct answer for question number 16. the cell cycle include mitosis what are features of this type of nuclear division forms from cells of equal size to the parent cell so mitosis does not produce daughter cells that are equal size to the parent cell so one taken out of the option already takes out a b c all right and only two is left so in mitosis it forms genetically identical nuclei which is correct semi-conservative replication of dna well we know that this process takes place in interface not in mitosis so number two correct only as a result d is the only correct option a student observed the cells in the growing region meristems of an onion root and obtained the data shown you can see we have interface prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase if we add up all of this number of cells this becomes 1000 now from prophase to telophase this is the portion that we have under pmat which is mitosis now the question asks us which percentage of cells contain chromosome that appear as two chromatids. Now if it needs to appear as two chromatids where the chromosomes are appearing then it needs to appear in this way. In this way. Now as two chromatids a single chromosome but appear as two chromatids. So what basically happens here is that only in prophase and metaphase you can see the chromosomes appear like this. And in every other places, they are either going to appear as single chromatids, like here, or it will not appear as chromatids as well at all, not visible as chromatids. So, by taking the numbers 73 plus 16 divided by 1000 times 100 percent gives us, times 100 gives us 8.9 percent. So, B is the correct answer. Which statement about the messenger RNA is correct? In eukaryotic cells, mRNA is made by removing exons from the primary RNA transcript. mRNA is a single standard polynucleotide containing a different purine base than DNA. So for option A, mRNA is made by removing exons. Now we know that mRNA is made by removing introns because these are non-coding section. For option B, mRNA is a single-stranded polynucleotide. It is a single-stranded polynucleotide which 
contains a different purine base than DNA. So it doesn't contain a different purine base rather because purine bases are adenine and guanine but it contains a different pyrimidine. It consists of different pyrimidine which is thymine. It doesn't contain thymine rather contains uracil. mRNA molecule contains ribose sugar joint to phosphate groups by phosphodiester bond. This is a correct statement about mRNA. The monomers of mRNA consist of a phosphate group, deoxyribose sugar and a nitrogenous base. Now we know that it deoxyribose sugar is only found in DNA. So this is a wrong statement as well. So option C is the only correct statement. Which structures are involved in the transcription only? Transcription is the process of making from DNA to mRNA. So DNA template strand, yes, DNA acts as a template strand in the process of transcription. Anticodons are not involved in the process of transcription. Only codons are involved and the codons are from mRNA. And RNA polymerase is involved in the process for producing the RNA. So B is the only correct option. One gene provides the code for the production of which type of molecule? So a gene providing the code for the production of which type of molecule? See, a gene codes for a protein and a protein is a polypeptide. So D is the correct answer. The table shows some mRNA codons that code for certain amino acids. We can see the mRNA codon and amino acids resulting from those mRNA codons. The DNA template strand has the base sequence shown. This is the base sequence of the DNA template. What would change? What would the change in amino acid be if the first base in the fifth DNA triplet, so the key point here is fifth, was substituted for an A base? So the first base of the fifth DNA triplet. Now let's see the first DNA triplet. One, two, three, four, five. And this GCA would result in C, G, U. And once the GCA will be substituted for ACA, where the G got substituted by the A, this will result in mRNA, which is U, G, U. So C, G, U. CGU codes for arginine as we can see and UGU codes for cysteine. So arginine would get converted to cysteine by this mutation. So arginine would convert to cysteine. C will be the correct answer. Which structures contain cytoplasm with mitochondria and a nucleus? So mitochondria needs to be present. Cytoplasm needs to be present and also nucleus needs to be present. Now we know that in phloem sieve tube element there is no nucleus. So in a companion cell, a companion cell has both cytoplasm, mitochondria and the nucleus. Xylem vessel element do not consist of any cell material. It's a dead cell. So the option will be A only because A is only indicating to companion cell which consists of cytoplasm with mitochondria and the nucleus. What is the correct term to describe intermolecular hydrogen bonding between water molecules? So a water molecule has partially negative oxygen and a partially positive hydrogen. So when another water molecule is just right next to it, the partially negative oxygen attracts the partially positive hydrogen in the form of bonding known as hydrogen bonding. So this is a cohesive force between the molecules themselves. So B will be the correct answer, cohesion. Now why other options are not correct? Adhesion is when it adheres to a surface. Osmosis is the net movement of water down water potential gradient through a partially permeable membrane. And diffusion is the movement of substances from high concentration to low concentration. The diagram shows the outline of an xerophytic leaf that has been left for 45 minutes in different conditions P and Q. Just by looking into the diagram, you can see in conditions Q, the leaf is curled up. Now, in condition P, the leaf is flat and what we can see from these two conditions curled up, think of maram grass and a xerophytic plant. So condition Q will be, uh, condition Q will be more negative water potential outside in Q. So low water potential in Q and condition P will be high water potential because only at high water potential, a maram grass would be flat and at low water potential, maram grass would be curled up.
Now, which statement about the cells in layer Y of the leaf in each of the conditions P and Q after the 45 minutes are correct? So, we have to talk about the layer Y. Okay, and also we have to talk about conditions P and Q. Now, there is a less negative water potential in P than in Q. So, yeah, P has high water potential, so it is less negative. One is correct. If one is correct, option D is rejected. Then, option number two, the cells may be charged in P and plasmalized in Q. Also correct, maybe, because being flat means it is definitely the cells are charged. Okay, option number three, the cells are less charged in P than in Q. Now, we know that... Q is a water stress. It is a water stress because maram grass curls up when there is a water stress. And remember, to, I told you to think about the example of maram grass. So, less target in P. It will be more target in P. So, this is a wrong statement. If number 3 is taken out, then 1 and C is obviously wrong. Since number 1 point is correct, then D is wrong. So, the fourth point, it says there is no net diffusion of water into Y in either P or Q. Guys, however, I cannot confirm this particular point, but let's go with the flow. So, A is the correct answer. If you know uh, how this, uh, there is no net diffusion of water into Y in either P or Q, if you know anything about this particular point, please let me know in the comments. Thank you, guys. Moving on to the next question. How does sucrose move from chloroplast to the phloem? Now, chloroplast, let's say, in a, is in palisade mesophyll cell. So, mesophyll cell. And the movement towards phloem would require that the sucrose get dissolved in water. So, sucrose dissolves in water. Now, after the diffusion, after the dissolving in water, it can move by the process of diffusion. It can move through the cell wall, cell wall route, apoplastic pathway. And it can also move through the symplastic pathway through via plasmodesmata. So, A will be the correct answer. How are companion cells involved in loading sucrose into phloem sieve tube elements? So, companion cells, loading of sucrose is an active process that requires energy from respiration. Now, let's see the options. Actively through co-transporter protein and passively through plasmodesmata. So, yes, the loading of sucrose into the companion cells is an active process which requires a co-transporter protein and then from the companion cell to the phloem sieve tube element, the movement is through plasmodesmata. So, it's a passive process. A is the correct answer. Now, let's see the other options. Actively through co-transporter protein and plasmodesmata. See, movement through plasmodesmata is not active. Passively through co-transporter proteins only now it involves energy so cannot be passive actively through plasmodesmata only again plasmodesmata movement does not require energy it just requires concentration gradient so 27 a would be the correct answer the photomicrograph shows blood cells as seen using a high power light microscope so we can see number one is identifying a uh, white blood cell but the type of white blood cell it is identifying is a phagocyte because it has a lobed nucleus a type of phagocyte can also be neutrophil. So it is either phagocyte or it can be neutrophil. Then number two identifies a monocyte because of the large nucleus that we can see. And number three, it shows a lymphocyte where it is smaller than a monocyte but covers the whole cell with the portion of the nucleus. So it's a lymphocyte. So now the question is which row correctly identifies the type of blood cell? And answer will be C. Now, between for option for one, neutrophil and phagocyte were both correct. However, for option for two, only monocyte is correct for this large cell. And for option three, only lymphocyte is correct. So, C is the correct answer. The diagram shows two blood vessels. The plan diagram of two blood vessels are shown. We can see one, which is the outside of the blood vessel, and the layers three, four, and five represented. Which labels are correct? First of all, a large lumen represents a vein, and a smaller lumen with a muscular wall represents an artery. So one is an artery, aorta is a type of artery, it can be an artery, could be coronary artery because it's a type of artery. But number two can only be a vein, so it could be vena cover, it could be vein, coronary vein as well. So option C is the one that is not correct at this point. For number three, it represents the outside most layer. Number four represents smooth muscle and elastic tissue. All right, so number four, it is definitely smooth muscle. And outside smooth muscle, the number three layer must be showing collagen fibers. 
That is number five is the endothelium. So number five, endothelium, correct for both A and B and D. However, number four, smooth muscle with elastic tissue is only correct in B and all right. And number three with collagen fiber, not elastic fiber. All right. So is B is the correct answer. What are found in blood and tissue fluid? So in blood and tissue fluid, we can definitely find carbon dioxide. We may find fatty acids as well. We may find white blood cell in both tissue fluid and blood and proteins as well. So for option uh, for question number 30, option A is the correct answer. All of the materials are found both in blood and tissue fluid. Which reactions would be slowed down by an inhibitor of carbonic anhydrase? So carbonic anhydrase. Now we have an inhibitor that is working on it. The action of carbonic anhydrase is to convert carbon dioxide into H2CO3 and convert H2CO3 in H plus and HCO3 minus ions. So 2 and 3 are correct. The process of car carbon dioxide binding with carbaminohemoglobin is not affected by carbonic anhydrase. So D will be the correct answer. Which sequence of letters correctly identifies the order of events during the cardiac cycle? Atrial walls contract. Impulses is delayed by a fraction of a second. Now, impulses is delayed by AVN after the impulse wave of excitation tries to pass through here. Now, wave of excitation enters the AVN. So, definitely, this should occur before U. So, after U, V will occur. Sorry, after V, U will occur. Now, wave of excitation passes down the perkine tissue. So, after waiting for a, a fraction of a second, it will pass down the perkine tissue. So, the next thing will happen is this one. So, we are already getting a sequence. First, it will be V followed by U, then it's going to be W. Wave of excitation spreads from the sinoatrial node. Wave of excitation first gets generated by sinoatrial node, then it gets passed to atria, and also after that it gets passed to the AVN. So X occurs the first, then leads to contraction of T, and then leads to, you know, then it goes to uh, atrioventricular node which is V and then after V it goes to W which then results in contraction of ventricles which is Y. So the first step will be X, the next step will be T then V followed by U. So X then T followed by V then U then W and then followed by Y. So C is the correct answer. The diagram gives information about blood pressure in the left side of the heart during the cardiac cycle. Valves open and close at the points that are numbered. Which row identifies the valves opening or closing at the points that are numbered? So at point number one, when the pressure, this dotted line represents ventricle, is increasing above the pressure of the atrium, the atrioventricular valve, valve closes here. And at point 2, when the pressure gets above aorta, then semilunar valve opens here. And then at point 3, it closes. And then at point 4, atrioventricular valve opens because the pressure of ventricle goes down the pressure of atrium. So at point 1, atrioventricular valve, okay, atrioventricular valve opens at point 4. So option D is the correct answer. 33D. A person with no breathing condition rests for an hour. Their breathing in this time is shallow and slow. So little air from outside the body reaches the alveoli. The person's heart rate remains constant. Which statement is correct? When the person rests for an hour, the breathing becomes shallow and slow. That's because there is low concentration of CO2 in body. It results from low respiration. So the heart rate remains constant just for maintenance. The carbon dioxide concentration in the blood in the pulmonary vein will be higher than in the pulmonary artery. Now, of course, the blood, the carbon dioxide concentration in the blood in pulmonary vein all right has to be the same as that of no it has to be lower because pulmonary vein brings returning blood from lungs which is oxygenated so carbon dioxide concentration will not be higher will rather be lower and pulmonary artery brings deoxygenated blood to lungs option b carbon dioxide molecules in the air of the alveoli move out of the blood by active transport now this is a process simple process of diffusion so definitely a wrong statement. The air in the alveoli has a lower concentration of oxygen than the blood in the pulmonary vein. So it has higher concentration of oxygen always. 
and the comparison does not make sense in part C. Oxygen molecules diffuse from the air in the alveoli into the blood at a slower rate than when the person is active. This is definitely true because the requirement for oxygen in the person's body is low and the blood is already saturated with oxygen. So D is the correct answer since blood is already saturated with oxygen when the person is resting. Which statements about all bronchioles are correct? Bronchioles they have epithelium. Definitely bronchioles have epithelium cells. They have goblet cells. Bronchioles do not have goblet cells. Only bronchus and trachea have goblet cells. So we need to keep that in mind. So if option 2 is taken, C is not present and A is not in our option. Since 1 is already correct, so 3 must also be correct. Let's see. They have a muscle tissue. Definitely they have muscle tissue, which is what contracts when we have breathing difficulty and the muscle tissues in the bronchioles can contract. Also contracts in response to presence of dangerous chemicals because our bronchioles are sensitive. The diagram shows some of the pathogens that causes disease in humans and some of the ways they are transmitted. So pathogens are bacterium, protoctist or virus. Well, they're all pathogens. Now method of transmission, contaminated water, contaminated water, okay, then mosquito bite, coughs and sneezes. Okay, so bacterium can definitely be transferred by contaminated water. Protoctis can be transferred by mosquito bites and virus can be transferred by coughs and sneezes as well. What is the correct pathogen and method of transmission for malaria? So obviously malaria is caused by protoctist. First of all, malaria is caused by protoctist. And second thing is it is spread by mosquito bite. So two and X is the correct statement. 36 C. Some of the process which results in the formation of population of bacteria that are resistant to a new antibiotic are listed. Change in reproductive success of bacteria. Increase in frequency of resistance allele in the population. Increase in genetic variation within the population. Random mutation occurs in bacterial DNA. So at first random mutation has to occur which will give it a survival advantage. So once it will give it a survival advantage it is also increases its genetic variation. So after 4 it will be 3. Once genetic variation increases this increases its reproductive success which in turn increases the frequency of the resistance allele in the population. So first random mutation is a must. So D has the only option where 4 is the first option. So D is the correct answer. When bacteria are grown in petri dish containing disc with antibiotics, there will be zone of inhibition of bacterial growth. So we can see zone of inhibition, area of bacterial growth occurring. And there is an antibiotic disc at the middle, which creates a clear zone. The chart show the size of zones of inhibition when a species of bacteria was incubated with five different plates of agar, each containing a disc of different antibiotic. We can see the most effective antibiotic is three. Number three is most effective and number two is least effective. Which conclusion can be made about the most and least effective antibiotics on the species of bacteria? So, most effective antibiotic is definitely 3 and least effective antibiotic is definitely 2. So, A is the correct answer. Which blood cell type does not recognize engulf and digest non-self particles? Non-self particles are engulfed by a type of cells called phagocytes and it is not done by T-killer cells. So D will be the correct answer. Macrophage, neutrophils and phagocytes are all a form of phagocytes. Repeated infection with malaria results in more effective immunity to malaria. Which type of immunity is responsible for more effective immunity? Now, when infection is caused, that is a active immunity, all right? And it is natural because the person got the disease. So, artificial options are wrong. Natural and active would be the correct answer. So, 40 answer will be C. Guys, that's all for this particular question paper. Thank you for watching this particular video. Hope this gives you some, you know, better idea of choosing a correct answer. All right. I try to make the video as effective as possible. Hope it helps you. Write in the comments if it does. And thank you guys for watching the video. See you in the next video, guys. Subscribe to the channel if you want videos like this.